What's blockchain? Oh boy, that's a that's a sixty-five dollar question. Um, um, it is essentially uh, a, a block, a, a chain of blocks, and in within each block, there's data, and that data or data depends on what part of the country you're from can um, can be only modified uh, using special tools, cryptography that allows limited access to that, and then it's on a distributed ledger. Okay, a, a distributed network and a distributed ledger, which means all the information resides in a multitude of nodes. Nodes are each individual computer, okay, uh, or the, uh, the the stationary aspect of that node, okay. And for something to be altered within that node, you have to have special cryptography keys. Those keys are then. Uh, only though that's the big issue you know everybody's running these systems that uh, create these keys and they validate if there's a change that can be authenticated amongst all of the distributed ledgers got it so it makes it almost hacker proof yeah there are, there are some issues and we, we call it the 51% rule and the 51% rule is if you control technically if you control 51% of the nodes you could potentially alter the record but that's the essence if you distribute it large enough uh, and wide enough you will have difficulty in altering the record so it becomes a true um, record without any fraud without any misrepresentation without anything that allows that that data to, per, to be preserved in its original state. Okay, one of the things you're gonna talk about is the application of this, and you started to list off a, a wide range of industries that could be changed with blockchain. Yes, um, and that's the whole idea. Today, it's not really about blockchain for dummies, it's about blockchain uh, beyond crypto, because everybody associates blockchain with crypto, and but its use is much more, um, um, gosh, what can I say? Um, there are uh, hundreds and hundreds of applications that are being devised as we talk, even now, to within the industry. And one of those is particular. We just talked a little bit about supply chain. We talked about voting. How about uh, um, any type of records? How about um, uh, um, uh, your housing records um, uh, at the state level? So you've got a, 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 a validity of that information that nobody can alter. Remember, there's some company out there saying, protect your title. Well, this does the same thing. But you don't, so you don't need that guy anymore. You don't need that middleman. You don't need that protection. Okay? And um, I, I'll give you a quick example. Um, uh, in supply chain, uh, the diamond industry, for example, um, everybody's worried about blood diamonds, right? Well, this would authenticate the, um, the origination uh, uh, original source of those diamonds okay so it allows you to be as a consumer confident that it, it, within your norms and your your um, your standards that you don't want to support blood diamonds you're buying an authenticated diamond because you know along the way along the supply chain there's numerous areas of fraud there's another example um, there's a company down in uh, New Zealand that ships biofluids and uh, primarily um, uh, 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 blood plasma from cattle because it's not tainted. Uh, as you know, New Zealand's very, um, very clean. They don't even let you in with dirt on your shoes. So <clears throat> it, um, you could authenticate so that blood plasma could not be altered along the way. And they, that's right now they have that problem. So it's going to be interesting in the ultimate for, I think, us consumers is having an app on your phone, which is what I'm going to talk about today, have an app on your phone, you can go up, take any product off the shelf, scan it, and come up with that complete history, provenance, and validity of that, of that product.